I'm very proud to tell you, I'm starting my 49th year here as a faculty member. Someday, each one of you will be able to say to another group somewhere, I hope the very same thing that I just said to you. The title of my remarks uh, are Graduate School and Beyond. What I want to talk with you about is not technical research aspects. I want to talk to you, I want to talk with you, not to you, or at you. I want to talk with you about life, your life, what you're going to do, not only in graduate school, but what you will do beyond graduate school. I want you to know you have fantastic opportunities in Madison, and you will have even more opportunities when you complete your graduate program and when you enter society as a responsible scientist citizen. You and I have awesome obligations to society. We benefit from society. We benefit from great advances in science and technology, but we have an awesome obligation and responsibility to share what we do, why we do it with others. And there are also some challenges. And just to help you a little bit with the correct pronunciation of my first name, it's Bassam. It rhymes with Shazam, but there's no Z sound in it. <laughs> so the next time you see me, either at Snout Out or in the hallway or in the elevator or on State Street, you might want to come up and say, Hi, Bassam, I'm a first year graduate student. You think about it. You don't have to do it. <laughs> if you think about it. Our mascot, Bucky Badger, he's a very good chemistry student. He does lots of experiments. You can see he obeys the safety rules because he's wearing goggles. <laughs> and he's doing a very interesting experiment, one of my favorite experiments. I have many favorite experiments. He takes, Bucky took a clear and colorless liquid and mixed it with another clear and color, colorless li liquid, and that's what he got, a beautiful yellow precipitate. He took potassium iodide solution, mixed it with lead nitrate uh, solution. You're shaking your heads. You've done this experiment before. Lead is related to the name of Bucky. We are the badger state because of relationships that we have with lead. What are these relationships? I ask that question of you so that you can look around and learn about the heritage that we have in Wisconsin. I ask you to learn what the Wisconsin idea is. before the end of the month. You're going to be doing a lot of things between now and the end of the month. But I want you to look into what the Wisconsin idea is, what it stands for, what it means, and how you can contribute to it. It's a very, very important part of your life and of the life of the university and our lives as responsible scientists, citizens in society. So I want to come back, go back to this for a second, because among other things, Bucky Badger does a lot of different experiments. So I'm going to do an experiment right now. I'm going to take some dry ice, and I'm going to take the dry ice uh, of course, obeying all the safety rules. You notice I already obeyed one when I put my goggles on. And I'm going to take some dry ice from this bucket. And I'm going to put the dry ice in this cylinder. And I'll put the dry ice in this cylinder. And also in this cylinder. 
Now I'm going to put this up so you can see the color changes better. Part of our responsibility when we do research is to make good observations and to share them with others and to enhance our ability not only to publish our work in the scientific literature, but to also do it with people who are non-scientists. So, can you see the color changes better this way or this way? That way. That way. That, way. <laughs> that wasn't part of the question. So that's another point I'm trying to make here. One of the things that contributes to our success in research is learning how to formulate the question so that we have a fighting chance in getting some reasonable answers. Lots of changes are happening right here. You see color changes in the acid-base indicators. You see brown tunnel blue changing to yellow, pyrothelene changing to what? Clear? Come on. All the liquids you're looking at are clear. It's clear and colorless. Don't you ever confuse those two words? They don't mean the same thing. I have a clear and colorless liquid in this flask, and I'll tell you what it is. It's water. I'm going to take the water and put it in this dish pan. Those of you near the front, do you see anything coming off the water? Steam is invisible, you can't see steam. What you're saying is, it's not water. This, is, it's not water vapor either. Water vapor is full. We have water vapor all over the place. You notice hot stuff, not on any object, right? <coughs> That's condensed water vapor, and the condensation causes this <coughs> uh, vapor to come up, and it, it then dissipates when the temperature reaches the ambient temperature. So now I'm going to take a chunks of dry ice and put them in this right here. I'm still here. <laughs> Does that look like steam to you? What does it look like? I know you're taking cameras out to take pictures. You may do so if you want to. <laughs> what I'm really interested in is having you form mental pictures of the joy of science and the joy of research. How we conquer the challenge and the frustration when we do research. And how we feel rewarded when we understand more about the beautiful, complex world that we live in. This is condensed water vapor. That's what it is. And you notice the plume at the beginning of the experiment went up. Now it's going down. Going down, it tells us that carbon dioxide gas is denser than air. You already knew that. But this is a beautiful way to display it and to share it, not only with each other as students in science and future scientists, but with everyone else. That's part of the joy of doing scientific experiments. Wisconsin idea. At the end of the month, after the end of the month, if one of you comes up to me and he says, hi, Ms. Sam, I'm a first year graduate student, I'm going to say, I'm glad to see you. What is the Wisconsin idea? <laughs> it's not a quiz. It's part of living the Wisconsin idea. I want to call your attention to a, a report from the American Chemical Society put together by a Blue Ribbon Commission that I assembled when I was president of the American Chemical Society. Is everyone in the room a member of the ACS here? Who is not a member of the ACS? You're willing to admit to it in this group here? <laughs> Those of us who are ACS members, let's be invited to those who are not yet. The American Chemical Society and the Wisconsin chapter of the ACS are groups that care about quality of life, quality of research, quality of education. I want to call your attention to this because it has many recommendations related to you. I put this commission together and asked them two questions. What are the purposes of graduate education in the chemical sciences? Hey, why are you here 
as graduate students, what are your purposes? This is not a rhetorical question. I want you to think about it. I don't want answers now. We don't have time for this because at 2 o'clock I'm supposed to stop. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> but, Christy, you've been doing such a good job organizing all of these talks, so I would like you to have this as a token of appreciation from us. So, and, then, and, then, and then, when you see the graduate students here, you're going to ask them to explain to you what's going on in this uh, device here, right? That's, maybe, maybe you will do that. Okay, here are, and the second, the second question, what steps should be taken to ensure that graduate education addresses important societal issues as well as the needs and aspirations of graduate students? Hey, that's you. I wanted to put the graduate students up front. And they came up with five conclusions and 32 recommendations. These are the tags for the five conclusions. And I ask that you look at this report. You can find it on the ACS website, or you can find it on my website. You can find it lots of other places. Uh, we're in science because we are curious. We enjoy asking questions, and we even enjoy more finding answers to those questions. But I'd like to call your attention to the grand challenges that we face in science and society. And that is, the question is, how can we help sustain Earth and its people in the face of population growth, finite resources, malnutrition, spreading disease, deadly violence, war, climate change? How can we do that? What should we do? Right now, around the globe, there are 1.3 billion people who cannot do what I am about to do. Take a sip of clean water. The solutions to all of these challenges are scientific in nature. And that is part of the reason why we have to utilize our talent our curiosity, not only to advance science, but to serve society. And I ask you to think about that throughout your graduate career and beyond. The most important bullet on this slide here is the very last one. The denial of basic human rights, especially the right to benefit from scientific and technological progress. We usually think about human rights as being political rights, which they are. But they're basic human rights. And each one of us has an awesome responsibility to see to it that people around the globe, not only in terms of having access to clean water, but dealing with all of these issues that are enumerated here. All right. When you come close to finishing your PhD, you have an opportunity to write a chapter in your thesis explaining the research to a non-technical audience. You're just starting out, so you're not even ready to do any of that, but I want you to know that my group supports this. And we have examples of these chapters posted on the website. So I just call this to your attention right now. Here's the website right here. And I also invite you to think about participating in communicating science to society. Not only to scientific audiences, but to audiences that especially are not scientific. And that's why we have the Science is Fun fan, and we want to foster community appreciation of science. Fostering community appreciation of science. I hope in the last few minutes I have helped foster this community appreciation of science. This very small community here. We want to cultivate creativity, we want to explore, learn, and of course, we want to be sharing. And people ask me, they say, Ms. Sam, why do you do all of these public engagement activities? That's why. That's why. That's why. That's why. So, here are some of the challenges.
<laughs> For you. As you look at the challenges, I'm going to do one more experiment in this large glass beaker that has a volume of four liters. If you just look at this beaker right now, you just learned how big four liters is. And you cannot unlearn it. You may forget it. Those are two different things. There is a Teflon coated magnet in there. I turn the motor on. And what I'm going to do is add a clear and colorless liquid. And then I'm going to add a second clear and colorless liquid. Anything interesting happened so far? A volume increase. <laughs> and you see what looks like a tornado? I hope this is the closest you'll ever come to a real tornado. And then I add the third clear and colorless liquid. What? <laughs> Did I say something? Did I do something? You're not even paying attention to me anymore. <laughs> Is there anything happening over there? I don't see anything happening. How come I don't see anything happening? What? I'm not looking? Yes, I'm looking. I'm looking at you. What? Would you want me to look back at the beaker? The last time I looked, the color of the liquid in the beaker was blue. Tell me what to look. Should I look right now? I don't want to trip over anything here. Safety is paramount. You know that. Should I look now? Yes or no? No? Yes. You're sure. Do good in the world. Thank you very much.